Welcome to day 14. Today is Genesis 35 through 37, Psalm 12, and Mark 14. Let's get right into it. Genesis 35, God said to Jacob, Arise and go to Bethel and dwell there. Make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all those who were with him, Put away the foreign gods that are among you and purify yourselves and change your garments. Then let us arise and go to Bethel so that I may make there an altar to the God who answers me in the day of my distress and has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings that were in their ears. Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree that was near Shechem. And as they journeyed, a terror from God fell upon the cities that were around them, so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. And Jacob came to Luz, that is Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan. He and all the people who were with him. And there he built an altar and called the place El Bethel, because there God had revealed himself to him when he fled from his brother. And Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died and she was buried under an oak below Bethel. So, she, so he called its name Alan Bakuth. God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations will come from you, and kings shall come from your own body. The land I gave to Abraham and Isaac I will give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink of offering upon it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the name of the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel. Then they journeyed from Bethel. When there was still some distance from Ephrath, Rachel went into labor, and she had hard labor. And when her labor was at its hardest, the midwife said to her, Do not fear, for you have another son. And as her soul was departing, for she was dying, she called his name Ben-Oni, but his father called him Benjamin. So Rachel died, and she was buried on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. And Jacob set up a pillar over her tomb. It is the pillar of Rachel's tomb, which is there to this day. Israel journeyed on and pitched his tent beyond the tower of Eder. While Israel lived in the land, Reuben went and lay with Bilah, his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve, the sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, Simeon, Levi, Judai, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, the sons of Rachel, Joseph, and Benjamin, the sons of Bilah, Rachel's servant, Dan, and Naphtali, the sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, Gad, and Asher. These were the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Padan Aram. And Jacob came to his father Isaac at Mamre, or Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, where Abraham and his and Isaac had sojourned. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years, and Isaac breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people, old and full of days, and his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. Genesis 36. These are the generations of Esau, that is Edom. Esau took his wives from the Canaanites, Ada from the daughter of Elon the Hittite, Aholibamah, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion the Hivite, and Basmath, Basmath, Ishmael's daughter, the sister of Nabayuth, and Ada bore to Esau Eliphaz, Bazimoth bore Reuel, and Aholibama bore Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Then Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the members of his household, his livestock, all his beasts, and all his property that he had acquired in the land of Canaan. He went into a land far away from his brother Jacob. For their possessions were too great for them to dwell together. The land of their sojournings could not support them because of their livestock. So Esau settled in the hill country of Seir. Esau is Edom. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, Reuel, the son of Bazimoth, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Timna was a concubine of Eliphaz, Esau's son. She bore Amalek to Eliphaz. These are the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Reuel, Nahath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the sons of Bazimoth, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Oholibama, the daughter of Anna, the, son, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. She bore to him, she bore to Esau, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. 
These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esau, the chiefs Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. These are the chiefs of Eliphaz in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Ada. These are the sons of Reuel, Esau's son, the chiefs Nehath, Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These are the chiefs of Reuel in the land of Edom. These are the sons of Bazimoth, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Oholibama, Esau's wife, the chiefs Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs born of Aholibama, the daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, that is Edom, and these are their chiefs. These are the sons of Seir, the Horite, in the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs of the Horites and their sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Hemam, and Lotan's sister was Timna. These are the sons of Shobal, Alvan, Manahath, Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the sons of Zibion, Aya, Anna. He is Anna who found the hot springs in the wilderness as he pastured the donkeys of Zibion, his father. These are the children of Anna, Dishan, and Aholibama, the daughter of Anna. These are the sons of Dishan, Hemdan, Eshban, Ethron, and Keran. These are the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. These are the sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the chiefs Lotan, Shobal, Zibion, Anna, Dishan, Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs of the Horites, chief by chief in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom before any king reigned over the Israelites. Bela, the son of Beor, reigned in Edom, the name of a city being Dinhabah. Bela died, and Jobab, son of Zerah of Bozra, reigned in his place. Jobab died, and Husham of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. Husham died, and Hadad, the son of Bedad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, reigned in his place, the name of his city being Avith. Hadad died, and Samla of Masikra reigned in his place. Samla died, and Shaul of Rehoboth on the Euphrates reigned in his place. Shaul died, and ba Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, reigned in his place. Baal Hanan, the son of Akbor, died, and Hadar reigned in his place, the name of his city being Pau. His wife's name was Mehetabel, the daughter of Matred, the daughter of Mezahab. These are the names of the chiefs of Esau, according to their clans and their dwelling places by their names, the chiefs Timna, Alva, Jetheth, Aholibama, Elah, Pinon, Kenaz, Teman, Mibzar, Magdiel and Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom, that is Esau, the father of Edom, according to their dwelling places in the land of their possession. Genesis 37. Jacob lived in the land of his father's sojournings in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pasturing flocks with his brothers. He was a boy with the sons of Bila and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a robe of many colors. But when his brothers saw that, his father, that their father loved him more than all the other brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Hear this dream that I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and behold, my sheaf arose and stood upright. And behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brother said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us, or are you indeed to rule over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and eleven stars were bowing down to me. But when he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream you have dreamed? Shall I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves to the ground before you? And his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. Now his brothers went to pasture their flock, father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers pasturing the flock at Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. And he said to him, Here I am. So he said to him, Go now, see if it is well with your brothers and with the flock, and bring me a word. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron and came to Shechem. And a man found him wandering in the fields, and the man asked him, What are you seeking? I am seeking my brothers, he said. Tell me, please, where are they pasturing the flock? And the man said, They have gone away, for I have heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. 
So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him from afar, and before he came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Now let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but do not lay a hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand to restore him to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and, he took it, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty, there was no water in it. Then they sat down to eat, and looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, with their camels bearing gum, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not let our hand be upon him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers listened to him. Then the Midianite trader passed by, and they drew Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where shall I go? They took jo then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered a goat and dipped the robe in the blood. Then they sent the robe of many colors and brought it to their father and said, This is what we have found. Please identify whether it is your son's robe or not. And he identified it and said, It is my son's robe. A fierce animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son for many days. All his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted and said, No, I shall go down to Sheol, my son, mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. Psalm 12. The faithful have vanished. To the choir master, according to the Shermineth, a psalm of David. Save, O Lord, for the godly one is gone, for the faithful have vanished from among the children of man. Everyone utters lies to his neighbor with flattering lips and a double heart they speak. May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that makes great boasts. Those who say, with our tongue we will prevail, our lips are with us, who is master over us. Because the poor are plundered, because the needy groan, I will now arise, says the Lord. I will place him in the safety for which he belongs. The words of the Lord are pure words, like ref silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. You, O Lord, will keep them. You will guard us from this generation forever. On every side the wicked prowl, as vileness is exalted among the children of man. Mark 14. It was now two days before Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And the chief and the scribes were seeking how to arrest him by stealth and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar from the people. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at a table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always poor, have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came to the twelve. And as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, 
one who is eating with me. And they began to be sorrowful and said to one another after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he were not born. And as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, this is my body. And he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it in the new kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said to them, You will all fall far away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall far away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, You will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took him with Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he said, and he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with a crowd with the swords and the clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against the robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him, but left the linen cloth and ran away. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. And they led Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting at the table with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men may testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witness do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him and to say, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You were also with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders said again to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know of this man of whom you speak. 
And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Bit of a long passage there. My eyes are slightly drooping. Uh, but it was, there was good stuff in there. So firstly, Jacob uh, is commanded by God to visit Bethel once again. Um, and to worship God there. And once again, as we see throughout the whole story of Genesis, this faithfulness um, of Jacob to listen to God and go back to Bethel resulted in his being blessed. And God once again reiterates this blessing and says that your name is now Israel. And um, God said to him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from your own body. So, um, specifically Abraham, but this is what is counted as righteousness, this faith in God, just um, living according to his will, trying to make our will match his. Um, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's basically the whole story of Genesis. All of Abraham's descendants... Um, the lineage of Jesus. It's all about their faithfulness and sometimes faithlessness, but ultimately it's about God's faithfulness to his covenant. Um, he keeps promises, and that's what we can get from that. Um, Psalm 12 kind of relates to that because it, it does condemn the people who speak vileness and evil, but I want to focus on when it says the words of the Lord are pure words. Like silver refined in a furnace on the ground, purified seven times. You, O Lord, will keep them. You will guard us from this generation forever. So what David is saying here is that God's words are perfect. God's words are true and they don't, he does not lie. And so when he says he's faithful, he's faithful. And we can, we can place our trust in that. Anything that God says is true. And that's something that is so sure that's like kind of almost uncanny how sure it is that everything that God says is true, but it's amazing. Um, and lastly, about Mark 13 or 14, this is what is leading up to what the Bible is all about. Um, the plot to kill Jesus, the Last Supper and his arrest and the trial. Um, this is Jesus. This is showing that Jesus is God, because when Jesus is praying in Gethsemane, we're reminded of the Trinity. When Jesus cries out to his Father, Abba, Father, and he's 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 acting as the Son. Well, not acting. That's not true. That's not how the Trinity works. But this is the Son crying out to the Father. In that context of the relationship, and it's weird to see Jesus in this very human and kind of disoriented, like miserable state where he's praying to his father in Gethsemane. Um, but at the same time, he is God and he knows that God's will is ultimately what needs to be done. And his prayer in Gethsemane is what our prayer throughout all of our lives should be. Although the cup that we need to bear is not death on a cross, um, we can certainly say, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you, yet not what I will, but what you will. This is a prayer that we should be saying every day because ultimately what we want is not what matters. It's what God does that matters. And we just need to be vessels of his will um, because what he says and his will is true and immutable and good. Um, yes. That is the word for today. Um, I'll see you tomorrow to finish off this week. Tomorrow's kind of short. It's only four chapters. So yeah, see you tomorrow.